After our two first episodes of the European Autonomous Horizon in Roland Garros with We Ride and in uh, Hamburg with Moya, we are today in Stavanger testing the Kassen bus automated by Adastec. We'll be meeting with Olaf from Applied Autonomy, Ada from Adastec, and Espen from Columbus. Adastec is an American company that has been developing this kind of um, autonomous driving system for some years now and they have been operating together with Columbus and Applied Autonomy this uh, 8 meter bus in Stavagers on public roads on various routes. The bus is equipped with various sensors of course, lidars, cameras, in order to be able to react to any traffic situation that could arise. Let's meet with the stakeholders that have been working on this project and let's try the bus now. We are now inside the bus, driving autonomously, fully autonomously in the city center of Stavanger on a 2.2 km route. It's a pretty challenging route because we have a lot of cars, bikes, pedestrians, roundabouts, and all this is managed uh, quite smoothly by the ADS system uh, from Alastec. Um, we are on a Carson platform, so a fully electrical uh, bus, and we actually reach speeds of up to 40 km per hour in a tunnel, which is pretty imp impressive knowing that, we, that the vehicle loses the GNSS connection while it drives under the tunnel. There are sometimes some relatively hard breakings, but they are due to uh, oncoming traffic or bikes or pedestrians. But for the rest, the vehicle is really able to handle this, um, this traffic situation uh, like in a close to human-like way of driving, which is pretty impressive. And how much time per day, I would say, do you need to like drive or can you say? Sometimes uh, zero reaction. Yeah. Sometimes two, three. Like if you have a lot of people and uh, yeah. people, cars, uh, bikes, maybe also. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Autonomy for us is like innovation on existing services. We need to make it like cheaper, uh, better, greener, reach targets related to climate and stuff like that. And autonomy is one part of that kind of puzzle. We launched this pilot. It's together with the Kazan, Adastec, V and Applied Autonomy as the main partner of the, of the project. In the beginning it was driving around 85% autonomous and then we of course in a pilot it needs to kind of we need to figure what can be those different kind of improvements. The bus started at 67% autonomous mode and ended up at 99% because the technology was improved. And we used Clos Flow, the remote control center, to find out where should the improvements be. Because there is all the statistics. Even though at that time we have a safety driver, we had all the needed data to analyze this together. So when the vehicle came up to 99% autonomous mode, Columbus decided we must make it more challenging. The bus was moved to the new route with a tunnel, right and left line shifting, more roundabouts, higher speed, uh, traffic lights. So after uh, three weeks, other stick was prepared. They were ready to take passengers on board. And now the bus has been operating since December 2023, up to now. We started here in this new route. I think it was around 87%. Now we are at 100% autonomous mode. And very few intervention by the safety driver. Now it's ready to take the next step. Yeah, exactly. We develop Flowride AI platform, which is level 4 automated driving software. Flowride AI is able to operate without a human driver in predefined areas and routes. Our operational design domain in Stavanger includes public roads with crosswalk, pedestrians, traffic lights, roundabouts, intersections, and an 800 meter tunnel. Safety comes first for us. And to be able to operate safely in such environments, Carson Autonomous e attack is equipped with a drive-by-wire system and the full sensor suite, which includes five LiDARs, one radar, one high-precision GNSS, and 11 cameras. Our bus can detect pedestrians, cyclists, other traffic vehicles, and traffic participants. We are able to operate in light snow conditions, rainy conditions, and foggy environments. We also have an HT map and localization system, which actually enables us to operate without GNSS signals, which this is one of the cases that we have here in Stavanger. 
uh, we have an 800 meter tunnel uh, in our ODD and even though we don't have any GNSS signal we are still able to operate without any connection and we are fully operational without any safety concerns. It is important to note that this bus is not a retrofitted bus. This is a factory fitted bus which means it is designed to be an automotive driving bus from the factory. All ADS hardware and all sensors, all software is already included in the bus while it's being manufactured. This is really important because we are making sure that we are fully automated from the get-go. People can sometimes think that when there is an automated bus on the route, many infrastructures had to change from the city's perspective. But this is not the case for us. In Stavanger's route, we didn't have any additional infrastructure whatsoever. So we are still able to operate without any additional help from the city's side, without any additional infrastructure. And this is the case in Stavanger. Hopefully the next phase will be in another area of the region, which could be even more like user-friendly for a service from A to B, where it's a need for a bus transport in general. And that's kind of the, the short future, and the long future is, of course, for Columbus is that there's a big kind of, that's in the industry as well, uh, so we have, we have to recruit bus drivers, and that's a, that's a big issue for the moment, all around Europe. So in this industry, Technology wouldn't kind of just kick out the bus drivers from the seat. Actually, it is necessary to kind of have the existing level of services. So with tech and, and drivers would perfectly work together, we think, or that's the kind of the scenario going forward. So in, and in the future, so it's also kind of a need to kind of to have the service on a certain level, but it also can, we can have uh, develop uh, it in furthermore, more like on demand services in the rural areas through night times, uh, when drivers maybe don't have to, or don't need to, or wish to work as well. So it's, uh, we think that te the technology here is my, very kind of complementary of the, and uh, complements the, the, um, the, the service and the challenges that the industry has. All that we do here in Stavanger, and all the experiences that we have learned, processes, procedures, training, the level that the vehicle is now at and will also be more advanced is available for all other European cities. We are coming with technologies, we are coming with business models, we are coming with experiences and we have already learned that cities like Rotterdam, Arbon City, Madrid, Gothenburg, Tampere, they built upon what we have done. And that is about working together in Europe. Do not reinvent the wheel if the wheel is already there. Built on best practices. And the thing here that we, we have a good ecosystem here in Stavanger. We have Columbus that support a project, that share experiences, that, that can tell how it works. We as an operator, they also share why they do this. That gives also trust to the other cities that they can do this. What is interesting here is how the ecosystem was built and how various stakeholders uh, have been able to collaborate to bring this project to life. Thank you Adastec, Columbus and Applied Autonomy for showing us around here in Stavanger. In the next episode we will be visiting the robotaxi deployment of Hütte next to Oslo in the Grorut Valley. Check our YouTube channel for other episodes of our European Autonomous Horizon.